Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us here today at the Sunshine Cathedral via the website. And we want to welcome you to our worship services whenever you're in the Fort Lauderdale area. If you are in the area, we invite you to worship with us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. We're located at 1480 Southwest 9th Avenue. And for those who watch us weekly on the internet, we invite you to check our website often for other listings and programming that we might have that may be of interest to you. And for now, I invite you to come in and worship with us here at the Sunshine Cathedral. Our first reading is from the wisdom of Billy Sunday. Religion needs a baptism of horse sense. Mm. <laughs> in these human words, God's voice is heard. Our second reading is from the wisdom of Max Lucado. Baptism separates the tire kickers from the car buyers. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Our third reading is from the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. In these human words, God's voice is heard. Days ago, the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport uh, had an incident. A, a, a person who was uh, troubled uh, was able to cause a lot of mayhem, shooting uh, in a terminal, hurting a lot of people, killing, I believe, five. And so before we go on, I would just like us to take a moment of silence for those who um, were taken from us. Would you please join me in this moment of silence? Let light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Well, the incident that I just referred to shows us the need for people to believe that they are God's miracle and not God's mistake. Now, I realize, of course, that there are some issues that are neurological, that there are some issues that are medical and uh, that uh, can only be treated uh, medically. And yet there's a lot of uh, things that could be better if people just felt they deserved better. If people just felt that they didn't need other people to be their enemies or to be less than them in order for them to be okay. If they just felt that they had, just because they existed, that they had sacred value. And so this gospel passage that uh, Reverend Margarita read today, when we heard the voice of God in that passage saying, this is my beloved one, this is my child with whom I am well pleased. Jesus heard that, according to Matthew, for himself, but it is shared in the gospel for us to hear it about ourselves. That we are to hear in the passage, we are the children of God. We have sacred value. We are God's miracle and not God's mistake. God is very pleased with us for who we are. And if we could believe that and embrace that and live that, then we would hurt each other so much less. We would hurt ourselves so much less. There would be less greed. There would be less violence. There would be more peace. And so this message that we hear from the gospel today is the gospel that we need to be passionate about. We need to be on fire with this message and let that fire spread. In the gospel reading Jesus comes to John to be baptized. And water rituals were very common in antiquity. They're common still. Washing uh, away hurts, washing away the past, getting a new beginning, a, a, a new birth. These, these are common uh, symbols. And we see that even uh, in our own sacrament of baptism. I don't believe that uh, the gospel is initiating that sacrament, that water ritual that John had going on was already around, and other people had water rituals, but we have, a, we have adopted and adapted it. 
And with the ritual of baptism, we are reminded of something. We have sometimes made the act itself sort of magical. Like it's the deal breaker. It's what gets you in. It's what gets you into the community. It's what gets you into the pearly gates. It's the deal breaker. You got to do it with the right words. You got to do it with the right amount of water. You got to do it in the right building. You got, there's a lot of rules. And if you follow all the rules, then just maybe you'll get under the wire. We have so perverted its purpose. Baptism for Jesus was a way to celebrate his beginning of a ministry of going out and making a difference in the world. A sacrament isn't a deal breaker. A sacrament isn't magic. A sacrament isn't a thing that makes you okay. A sacrament is an outward sign of inward grace. It is the outward celebration of the inward reality. It is the way of saying you are God's miracle and not God's mistake. That Jesus wanted to Begin his ministry that way makes sense. But here's the twist. We heard Reverend Margarita read verses 13 through 17 of Matthew 3, where Jesus comes and he gets baptized. But if we had backed that up just two more verses, we would have heard John the baptizer say, I baptize with water, I wash people with water, I splash people with water. But after me comes one who is very powerful, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing hook is in his hand, and he will gather wheat into the barn and burn away the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then Jesus shows up, he gets wet, and he begins a ministry that sets his part of the world on fire. Now, the fire isn't a threat. That's another thing we've messed up. The burning bush wasn't a threat. That was a divine encounter. The flames of Pentecost weren't a threat. That was an encouragement. That was an emboldenment. That was getting some wheels turning. Divine fire is a blessing. Divine fire burns away the chaff so that all that is left is what is real. Divine fire burns away the fears and the regrets and the mistakes so that all that is left is that which is part and parcel of God, which is what we truly are. We have turned the gospel into pyromania as if it's some big, terrible threat. And what it is, it's a lifeline saying, there is nothing that can threaten you because you are kept safe by divine fire. The fire is an idiom. It's a figure of speech. In Catholic theology, more so in the past than now, but it's still official doctrine, I think there was the, the teaching of purgatory. And even that, over the centuries, became very negative, a punishment. God is, God is so angry that even the people who, who God will eventually accept first have to take their time at the woodshed. And that's not what the doctrine is. The doctrine is, if, if we are so burdened, if we are so weighed down with guilt and shame and fear and regret that we don't know that we belong in the presence of God, we don't know that we are part and parcel of God, whatever that is that is hiding our truth, it's never too late. So if we didn't learn it in life, even beyond life, the flames of divinity will burn all that mess away so that what is left is our true self, which can then gloriously and joyously enter into the presence of God. Jesus wants to immerse people in hope. He wants to baptize people with the flames of hope, not threats, not fear. Jesus wants to immerse people in hope, in compassion, in a zest for making a difference in the world. Jesus wants to get people fired up for justice, for healing, for building people up, for forming communities of care and concern and celebration. Jesus wants people immersed, splashed, hosed down with a new attitude, with a new way of thinking. He wants people swimming in the notion that the last will be first and the first will be last because in God's kingdom there is no last and first. There's just a place for everyone at the table. Jesus wants the hungry fed and sick people tended and political prisoners encouraged and refugees welcomed and vulnerable people protected. Jesus wants to resist empire, but not with weapons, with the power of love. 
Jesus wants to conquer fear with hope. Jesus wants people to know that they and all other people have sacred value. And he's on fire to immerse people in this message. And he wants his disciples and his admirers and his friends to be on fire to live and share this message too. When people are on fire with a desire to love their neighbor, when people are on fire with a desire to care for those in need, when people are on fire to work for justice for all people, then all the useless crap that passes as religion and politics and values, well, they just burn up like the garbage they are. And what is left is the nourishing spiritual wheat that we have stored in angelic barns. When there are evangelists and preachers and politicians telling you that you deserve less than other people, that you do not deserve to be affirmed, that you aren't really as much a citizen as everyone else, when they tell you that you are neither a full citizen of this country or of the human family or of the kingdom of God, all of that mess needs to be burned up. And that's the baptism of fire. And so here is Jesus with his, with his winnowing fork, separating what is true and good, that we are God's miracle and not God's mistake, that we are the beloved children of God, putting that in the barn and all this other mess Jesus got a match for. And in the barns, in the barns, that's where we store the nourishment of self-esteem, the nourishment of generosity, the nourishment of concern for the so-called least of these, the bread of justice, the grain of hope, the flower of goodwill, that's what's left. And that's what we have to share when we are on fire the way Jesus wanted people to be on fire. Thinking of Jesus' baptism reminds me of a biblical hymn. We're told in the Gospels that Jesus, when he had his last supper with his friends, his followers, his disciples, his family of choice, he, he sat for a, a Passover meal. And when the supper was over, they sang a hymn. And he went out into the garden. Well, I believe I know what that hymn was. He and his disciples sang... You know that it would be untrue. You know that I would be a liar if I were to say to you, girl, you couldn't get much higher. Come on, baby, light my fire. Try to set the night on fire. How do you know? Someone asked me at the first service. That was the song they sang. Because in John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am a door. <laughs> it's no sillier than a lot of stuff you believed before you got here. Come on. <laughs> Setting the world on fire with hope and a commitment to do justice and love mercy and live humbly. That's the baptism we are called to share today. At Sunshine Cathedral, we splash some water around every once in a while. We did it this morning. And we love to splash babies and make them cry. That's kind of fun. <laughs> but that's just the trappings. We define baptism as an immersion in the life of our spiritual community. And you can choose to celebrate with, that, with water if you want to. But the important thing is to be immersed in the life of this community. Because if you are immersed in the life of this church, you will be on fire for justice. If you are immersed in the life of this church, you will be on fire to bring hope and healing to hurting people. If you are immersed in the life of this church, you will be on fire to pull down the strongholds of racism. If you are immersed in the life of this church, you will be on fire to affirm and celebrate the LGBT community. If you are immersed in the life of this church, you will be on fire to share the message that we are each God's miracle and not God's mistake. John's watery baptism was fine, but the power is in the fire. The theme of being on fire 
to heal wounded souls, to build justice-seeking communities, to affirm the dignity of every human being, is actually how Matthew's gospel ends. We start with Jesus' baptism in chapter 3, but then by chapter 28, we, are, we revisit the concept of baptism. The last two verses of Matthew's gospel bring us to baptism again. But those concluding verses don't mention water. Don't mention uh, pitchers of water. Don't mention ponds or rivers. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20 read, Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name, not in the water, but in the name of the parent and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have taught you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let me rephrase that for us today in light of the Jesus who baptized not with water, but with fire. We hear it this way now. Instead of go out and make disciples, that sounds so religious and useless, right? No, we here today reach out to as many people as possible, immersing them in God and in Christ and in the Holy Spirit, immersing them in an awareness of the omnipresence of God, immersing them in life and in love and in liberation. Well, how do we do that? By teaching them about this Jesus who was on fire to give broken people their dignity back and who was on fire to create a world where love reigns supreme. And as we do that, the fire of Jesus will be our own for as long as we shall live. Early in Matthew, Jesus kicks his ministry off with John's water ritual. But John tells us, Jesus isn't going to get us wet. He's going to light a fire under us. And Jesus' fire cannot be extinguished. Jesus then goes on and starts lighting those fires. And Matthew concludes the gospel by challenging us to be keepers of the flame. And can't nobody flame like Jesus except possibly us. And this is the good news. Amen. We pray today for ourselves and our loved ones. For our nation and our world. For our cathedral and our community. For hope to overcome horror for purpose to outlast pain, for injustice to give way to good news, for healing to occur whenever it is needed, and for joy to fill every heart. And with people all over the world, we pray. May peace prevail on earth. Thank you for joining us today here at the Sunshine Cathedral. If you're ever in the Fort Lauderdale area, we invite you to stop by and worship with us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30 a.m. If you'd like to make a donation to the Sunshine Cathedral, or if you'd like to find out other resources that the cathedral has to offer, please visit us at www.sunshinecathedral.org. Until the next time, we look forward to seeing you here at the Sunshine Cathedral.